Hi everybody! I decided I was going to make a quick little video. Um, I've never actually done this before, uh, so this is going to be a learning experience for me as well. Um, but I figured I might as well film it so that you guys can see what my process is. Um, I'm going to be attempting to make a little travel watercolor palette. So these are the supplies that I'm going to be using. I have a Sculpey 3, which is an oven safe bake, uh, baked clay. And um, then I have a couple of tins over here, all of which are quite deep, um, which is something that's gonna be really important for uh, trying to make this palette. And then I have a bunch of excess empty watercolor um, palettes, uh, tin things, little containers. So um, these I've collected up over the years uh, and they've just been kind of sitting around and I figured it might be fun to do an art project with them. I went down to my local art supply store today and picked this up and then I had a bunch of extra little ones of these that I bought on Amazon for super cheap a long time ago. They actually came in just this generic little packaging. So this is something that you can easily get on Amazon. So um, let's get started. So first off, I need to decide which tin it is that I want to use. So this one is um, a really amazing tin that I picked up a couple years ago that had dark chocolate in it. And it's actually really deep, as you can see here, which is gonna be perfect because we're gonna put clay along the bottom and then insert the, the little pans. Um, I'm not entirely sure that this is the one I'm gonna be moving forward with because as you can see, it can actually fit quite a number of uh, these in there. Actually, if we turn them this way, we can get three across and then let's see at least six down so that's an awful lot of colors I don't know if that's something I necessarily need right now I'm definitely going to save it for the future because this is a tin that I don't want to get rid of I think what I'm going to be going for today is either this tin which is a little bit smaller and needs to be cleaned out or this one which um you guys know how much i love tigers so let's see i could probably fit very easily what a nine yeah so this one looks like it could very easily fit nine which is nice um i don't know if that's what i'm gonna go for this one looks like it can fit probably 12. so yeah, that one could easily fit 12. I think for the sake of this one, I'm probably going to be going for the nine. So I'm going to pull these out. I've made my decision. And from here on out, I'm actually gonna go and clean this off really quick, and then I'm going to get started. Okay, now I have a completely dust-free tin. I've gone and I've cleaned it out and I've wiped it down. Uh, to make sure that it's 100% clean and dry. That's really important. Now I have my Sculpey clay and it's time to mix it and knead it together until it's really soft and pliable. Okay, now that I've applied all of the polymer clay to the bottom of the tin, um, I've tried to get about that much thickness at the bottom so that when I actually start putting the, um, the little containers in, they actually can create um, a little bit of an imprint so that after I bake this, I can easily put them back uh, and that they're going to stay there. So now I have all of my little containers off to the side. Uh, a thing of note, it does specify on the packaging for this that it might dye the surface of um, your skin or anything else that it comes in contact with. You'll notice that my fingers are a little bit white and chalky, that, so that's something to keep in mind. These do come in a multitude of different colors, so you don't have to go with white, it's just what I chose. You can actually see uh, little white fingerprints being left on the tin because of that. So I will clean this up when I'm done. Um, so I can see inside of this little mint tin, these two little hinges here, and I'm gonna use that to try to eyeball the center of this tin. So I'm going to lightly put my little pallets, little containers. I'm not pushing down too hard because I do want to make sure that it does look relatively even. Um, so I'm gonna space these out a little bit better. 
eyeballing it and now I'm going to apply the other ones around it. Around that first middle row. Man down. Okay. So it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. It just, I just don't want it to be too off where I'm just gonna notice it for the rest of my life. Um, so that's looking pretty good to me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push down on all of these little tins to make an imprint into the clay in the bottom. Okay, now with a little bit of assistance from uh, a Copic marker, I was able to push each little pan down deeper into the clay. So um, as I don't know if you guys can see how far the clay comes up inside of each of these little pans. So uh, this particular clay calls for 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes per quarter of an inch. So um, because these little uh, these little containers are made out of plastic, I'm really hesitant to put them into the oven. Um, I'm afraid that they might melt. So I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to put it into the oven for one f uh, at uh, 150 degrees. Um, and keep an eye on it and just let it set for longer. Or I'm gonna go grab some pliers and I'm gonna pull these out individually. So um, yeah, let's see how this plays out actually. Okay, now that I've pushed all of these little pans into the clay, I used a Copic marker um, just to help assist because I was having a hard time getting them in really nice and deep. Um, they are all in there, they're all set. So this particular clay requires or um, suggests 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes per quarter inch. Um, because these particular pans are in here nice and deep, it's going to be very difficult for me to get out. Um, and I am very concerned about the plastic possibly melting. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to reduce the heat to 150 and I'm just gonna keep it in the oven longer and I'm going to keep an eye on things as it starts to bake. One of the things I did when in college using a very um, this very uh, same clay actually, is instead of baking in an oven, um, one of my sculpture teachers actually said just to put it on the dashboard of your car and leave your car in the sun and it'll help bake things slowly over the day. Um, so that's also uh, a possibility, but for me right now, I'm just going to go use my oven. So um, I will check in with you guys once it's done. And now to show off the finished product. So I ended up having enough clay where I was able to do a second tin. So this is the one I'm actually gonna be using. It has 12 uh, little containers in it, whereas this one has nine. And I'm gonna take this on my journey this next month as I'm traveling through Europe, and I'm really excited about that. Um, but what I ended up doing is taking the tins and putting them in the oven around uh, the middle tray. The temperature originally was at 150 degrees. I did that for about 40 minutes, continually checking on it and it wasn't hardening. Uh, I used a toothpick to just kind of poke into the clay and check. At that point, I decided, okay, I'm gonna bump it up to 200 degrees and it worked perfectly. For another 40 minutes or so, I let it sit in there until the toothpick was no longer creating the little dots and it didn't damage the plastic containers themselves, so that was perfect. I then pulled them out and let both containers rest for about an hour or two while I did something else um, just to make sure that everything had cooled down properly before I started applying the paint. And this one, I've already taken out some of my watercolor tubes and put paint in it. So again, this is the container I'm gonna be taking with me as I travel this next month, and I'm really excited about it. With both of these containers, you have the lid that flaps open and can actually be used as a palette to mix colors. So that's really neat. And then I already had one of these water, uh, pens so it has the water chamber here in the the handle of the uh, the brush pen 
you take it off. Ooh, this one's really gross. Super old. I needed to have cleaned it, I guess. Um, so I have another one of these and I'll be taking that with me during my trip. So uh, the, of course, the one with the tiger is the one I'm going to be keeping for myself because as you guys all know, I love tigers. But I am going to do a giveaway at some point in the near future for this particular tin where one of my followers, um, I think this is going to be a Patreon exclusive contest and somebody's gonna be able to win this tin. So um, even if you don't win, this is a great little project. It didn't take too terribly long. It allows for a lot of customization. You get to choose your own tin. Um, it could be something special that you pick up while you're traveling uh, or just something that you find very visually interesting. So um, yeah, thank you guys all so much for watching and I can't wait to be posting about my journeys this next month and uh, hopefully there's gonna be some interesting stuff that I'm able to produce while I carry this particular tin around with me. So again, thank you all so much, and I'll see you next time.